Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. or oh, rejoice in the glad. You're welcome to this live chosen broadcast as we receive the engrafted word of God. And today I'll be talking about God's word. That's what I want us to look at today. Do you value the word of God? Do you place value on his word? All it takes to win and to reign in life is within God's word. Your success and victory is directly related to the application of God's word. You know, Jesus was sharing and said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. You know, the truth liberates the truth is God's word. It doesn't matter what the situation may be for you right now in the natural. It is subject to the integrity of the word. So today we're going to look at this scripture. Let's go to Joshua. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it said, this book of the law, you know, I could uh, thank you, Lord. Okay, let me just read it. I just want to get to the scripture as I can. Let's study together. In Joshua 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You see, what, what do you do with God's word? You use God's word to determine what you want to receive, what you want to see, what you want to receive, what you want to manifest. So here he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That simply means I need to have God's word coming out of me. You know, the scripture said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if I have God's word in me, that word has the ability to change any situation. And he said that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. To meditate. The first thing I want us to look at today is place value on God's word. Value God's word. You know, for some people, it's just a Bible. But for others, it is the living word of God. It's not just a historic book. For some people, it is the living word of God. Because they've come to see the Bible as the living word, not just a story book. You know, for some people, they just, okay, the Bible is a history of what has happened more than 6,000 years ago. Or a history of something that have happened many years ago and is being documented for people to read for the purpose of history, for the purpose of research. No, 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 no. We we need to think better than that. We need to be more smart than that. We, we shouldn't end it that it is just a history. Mm -mm. If you see it as just a history, you won't get much out of it. This book is living. This book is alive. The word of God is alive. There is life in the word. There is so much energy in the word of God. If you want to see 
the manifestation of power, the release of the Spirit, you have to pay attention to God's Word. The value you place on the Word of God will determine the extent of the manifestation you're going to see through the Word. If, if I want to see greater manifestation, it is when I begin to meditate on God's word, then I believe that word, I speak that word, or I declare that word with an expectation that that word will come to pass. I will start seeing results. Maybe the first time I, I declare the word of God, I didn't see any manifestation. That should not stop me from declaring it or from saying it because some people, if they declare God's word and maybe they didn't see result, maybe they apply the word, stood on the word, maybe nothing is working and they quickly get distracted. No. Patience is important if you're going to see the manifestation of the word. Patience is important. You know, you, you, you can't just declare the word of God and then because you didn't see manifestation you walk away God's word is full of power but you have to value it a lot of people don't value God's word they, they want to get the deliverance they want to have supernatural intervention they want to see the miracles they want to see the signs and wonders what is going to happen when you choose to stand on God's word when you choose to be consistent and believe in the word that no matter what is happening right now I believe God's word this is the kind of thinking that God expects from you that no matter what is happening right now you are going to believe his word you are going to stand on that word you know Paul said to Timothy he said preach the word in season and out of season he said preach the word he said in season and out of season he told him to preach the word in season now the same way he said preach the word in season out of season we should see doing the word in season and out of season we are doing the word that no matter what the situation may be or the challenges may be we're doing the word in season and out of season we're doing the word that no matter what the situation may be in the natural, we are doing the word in season and out of season. And, and this is how you change your life. So the first step to receiving from God's word is to value God's word. Number two, if the word of God is going to work for you, you have to believe it. You know, for some people, they said, well, how will this work for me? How will the word of God work for me? Now the word won't work except you believe it. The Bible said, with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you hear the word of God and you don't believe it, that word has no root. It won't take root in you. The word of God takes root in us when we believe it. The word takes root in us when we believe it the question today is do you believe the word because if you want to see the transformation you have to believe the word that no matter what is happening right now in your job in your finances you believe that with god's word all things are possible you see when you believe god's word it will determine your approach towards situation it will also determine your attitude towards situation. It will also determine how you look at situation. Why? Because you believe the word. Because you believe the word, you expect miracles. You expect signs of wonder. You expect supernatural release because you believe the word. He said, with the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The same way we came into the Lordship of Jesus who came into salvation, it is some way we're going to receive the healing. It is some way we're going to receive deliverance. It is some way we're going to walk in supernatural protection. We believe it, we declare it. We believe it, we declare it. It is important that you believe it. So if I'm reading God's word 
and I don't believe the word of God, it is impossible for me to experience increase. The increase comes as you believe. It doesn't matter what you're seeing in the natural right now about your job, about your relationship. These things are subject to change if you choose to believe God's word. These things are subject to change. I can tell you that these situations, these circumstances, these oppositions, they are subject to change if you believe God's word. And someone said, but I believe. But they have not changed. Keep believing. Don't quit from believing. Don't walk away. Don't say, oh, I believe the word of God for five years. I'm not seeing anything. I've been a Christian for 10 years. I'm not seeing anything. No. Don't be in a hurry to quit your faith walk because of lack of manifestation of results. What you got to do is to stay in the place of patience. Is to stay in the place of thanksgiving and say, Lord, I thank you because what you said will come to pass. Lord, I thank you. You see, a lot of people give up when they are very close to manifestation. You see, if there is a delay in manifestation, that is a temptation already. All the enemy wants you to do is to just give up, walk away, quit, and say, well, it's not working. I don't see anything coming out of it. You know, the enemy wants you to say that. The enemy wants you to say, it is not working. The enemy wants you to say that, oh, I've been believing for five years. There is nothing more to do. I'm tired of all of this faith, believing God, speaking the word of God. I'm tired. The enemy wants you to get to a point where you can easily say it's not working. You know, your confession is important if you're going to enforce your victory. Your confession is important if you're going to see the manifestation of testimony. So when you believe, no matter the pressure you see, don't quit on God's word. When you when you believe, no, 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 no matter the pressure you see, no, no matter the circumstances, no matter the challenges you see, don't give up. Don't you know? For so many people, they just walk away. Look at the woman of Israel blood in Mark Gospel chapter five, from verse twenty-five to thirty-five. If you read the account of that woman, she tried all she could, but nothing seems to work. She spent all she had. But there is an attitude I like about her. She was not willing to give up. She was not willing to give up. She never believed that she was going to end that way. She believed that a day is coming in my life that something will turn around. And one day she heard about Jesus. And she believed. And she said, if I can touch, I'll be made whole. You see, when you believe, you'll be on the move to change situation. When you believe, and she believed. She, she didn't just say, well, what will be, will be. Because for some people, when things are not working out for them, they just get tired. They just get frustrated. They just feel like, oh my God, I'm tired. I want to quit this. No, listen. If you give up, you have lost out. If you continue, you have victory. Those who give up have not seen the true picture of what God can do. Or what God is willing to do. They just give up. No. No. That's not what would change your life. Quitting won't change your life. Giving up won't change your life. Turning back and walking away won't change your life. You know what will change your life? It's when you believe. And you stay. He said that Abraham believed God. Now, I want to show you what happened when God gave you a word. And you believe that word. In Romans chapter 4, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 4, <clears throat> sorry. In Romans chapter 4, look at verse 3. He said, For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. What did he believe? It was what God told him. It was the promises of God. Abraham believed God. You know, sometimes a lot of people just feel like, I can't take it anymore. I'm tired of seeing all of this situation. I can't take it anymore. No, he said here, for Abraham believed God 
and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God. There were reasons to give up. If you are looking for reasons why you should give up, the reasons why you should quit, the reasons why you should stop doing what is right, the reasons are all around you. If you're looking for reasons to give up on the word of God, on the plan of God, on the purpose of God, the reasons are all of it, all around you. It doesn't take anything to give up, but it's going to take you everything to continue. It's going to take patience. It's going to take faith. It's going to take consistency, focus, praise. It's going to take you everything to continue. It doesn't take anything to quit. Anybody can give up. Anyone can just say, I'm tired, I'm walking away, I'm not going to do anymore. Anybody can quit. Children quit. People, you know, quit. But great people don't give up. They hold it onto their hearts. That's how they work. They don't give up. Other people could just call, I'm tired, I can't do this, I'm frustrated. They can't give up. But you shouldn't be among those who easily give up. It's not a good testimony that you always quit. It's not a good it's not good for your reputation that you're always giving up. Giving up. No. You should be a person that should continue in believing God, in trusting God, in taking his work to your heart. You should be that kind of person. He said, For Abraham believed God. There were reasons why he should not believe God. And let me tell you one of the reasons why most people can't believe God. They got offended. They are frustrated. They, they, they focus on feeling than to trust God. How can feeling be your focus? God may ask you to do something and the first five years, nothing is happening. The first ten years, nothing is happening. He, he, he. Let me say this. When nothing is happening, be preparing for what is about to happen. When nothing is happening, you should be preparing for what is about to happen. You shouldn't say nothing is happening and just walk away. That's not how those who walk by faith do. I've been preaching the gospel for many years. I've had reasons to quit. I've had reasons to walk away. I've had reasons. But none of those reasons are more important than one reason why I should continue. That's what makes you a great person. A great person is not someone who is not tempted to quit. Is someone who does not yield to the temptation of quitting. That's a great person. All the great people I know have been one time tempted to give up, to walk away, frustration, temptation, opposition. But you know what keeps them going? The vision to finish well. The vision. So when you have the word of God in you, you become established. So when the wind comes, the storm comes because you're founded on God's word, you're not removed. When the storms of life comes, when the challenges come, when the adversary of life, things you never expected, the reason why you have to be established in God's word, it gives you the ability to overcome temptation, to overcome trial, to overcome opposition. Oppositions come. Oppositions come. Trial come. Things that you never expected that they were going to show up, they showed up. Well, you need to continue. You need to move on. You need to stand on God's word. You need to believe that word until there is a manifestation. This is what makes you a great person. Until there is a manifestation of the things God has spoken to you. I'm talking to you right now. If you believe God's word, there will be opposition, there will be temptation, there will be trial. But if you keep believing it, you will rise above all of those situations. Victory comes by faith. And we win when we walk by faith. And that is what God wants you and I to do. To walk by faith and to trust Him and to believe His word. And all things are going to be possible. Father, we thank you for this broadcast. We pray for everyone that is watching. We pray that your grace will rest upon them. That they continue in the word of God. They continue in what God has called them to do. They continue in their vision. They continue in their assignment. I pray that your faith will, will, will move to another dimension. I pray that the passion 
for the word of God will grow. That you're not going to quit on what God has told you. You're going to believe that word you have received. That word of God you have received concerning your dream, concerning your marriage, concerning your children. You are not going to walk away. You're not going to give up. I prophesy to you that strength will come to you right now. You'll be a kind of person that God will look up to and say, She is in faith. He is in faith. He is doing what I ask him to do. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will come into your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God's word works. I hear God saying this. Listen, if you stay, if you stay with the word, if you keep meditating on God's word, if you keep applying God's word, if you keep trusting the word of God, if you keep doing the word of God, you will come back with testimony. I'm telling you. You will come back with testimony. No matter the pressure that you're seeing right now, the, the, the situations around you, I hear God saying that as many that choose the way of my word and stand on my word, we have the victory that will challenge and inspire the faith of others. You can't stop believing God right now. You can. The word of God is full of life, is full of solution. This book has so much answer for your dream. So much answer for your vision. So much answer for what God has called you to do. Has God given you a word? Has he said something to you? You know, sometimes we could just be pursuing the dream that God gave to us. And suddenly it's like a storm just came. We never expected it. We didn't see it come most of the time. But you see, what God wants you to do, he said, like Paul will write, he said, Nay, in all these things you're more than a conqueror. If you are rooted in the word, you will conquer the storms of life. If you are rooted in the word of God, you're going to conquer the storms of life. The storms are real. Temptations are real. Opposition is real. But the most important thing is that you should be rooted in the word of God. If you're rooted in God's word, your victory will be sure. And this is what will take you beyond your contemporary. So, Value the word of God. Meditate on God's word. The word is full of life. See, let me show you a scripture in the book of Hebrews. I want to show you this. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. In Hebrews 4, verse 12, watch this. Hebrews 4, verse 12. It said this. Thank you, Lord. He said, For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick. And powerful. You know, when you have the word of God in your spirit, you are considered as a powerful person. If you have the word of God in your spirit, the most important thing is to have this word in your spirit. In Colossians 3.16, he said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Creation came by the word. Creation. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, everything God did, he did by his word. Everything God created, he created by his word. His word was the tool for creation. You see, all you're looking for is in the word of God. Get to a point in your life where your thinking is being decided by God's word. You're thinking, in Romans 12 verse 2, he said, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you get to a point in your work that you, you, your mind is renewed with God's word. You renew your mind every day. In Philippians 2 verse 5, he said, Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Now let me say this to you. In Hebrew 4 verse 12, he said, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword. The word of God is quick. He said the word of God is powerful. So when you, when you are reading the word of God, expect revelation. Expect inspiration. Expect encounter. Whenever you are reading God's word, the word of God is a medicine. It's a medicine. You know, I needed to show you that. We have read that the word of God is powerful. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In, in Proverbs chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 4. Like us to look at verse 20. He said, My son, attend to my words. He said, My son, attend to my words. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying, My son, attend 
attain. You know, you know, if you don't give attention to the word of God, you can't make progress. He said, attain. Give attention. This is how you begin to move your life forward. You see, God's word has all it takes to change your life. But for the change to commence or for you to experience the change, you have to read the word. You have to apply the word. This is how you make progress. You have to read the word. You have to apply the word. And he said here, My son, attend to my words. Incline their ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. The word is life. The word is health. And, and this is why it's important that you value the word of God. That you value God's word. You get to a point in your, in your life that you said, no, I need to put the word of God first. I need to put the word of God. It doesn't matter the report you have heard. God's word is the last report. It doesn't matter the report you have heard. Whatever they told you that cannot be changed is subject to change. If the word of God is in oppression, limitations will be broken. If God's word is in oppression, oppositions are subject to the integrity of God's word. If you are watching this broadcast today, it's time to get into the word. It is time to think from God's word. It is time to speak the word of God. It's time to look at your situation from the perspective of his word. It is time to make God's word your report that my way of thinking will be consistent with the word of God. And this is what brings transformation. This is what brings healing. This is what brings deliverance. This is what brings supernatural transformation. There is power. There is life. There is deliverance in the word. In Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent forth his word. His word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. What heals is the word. What deliver is the word. Get God's word into your spirit. You know, one of the ways you experience spiritual progress is by the application of the word. I said one of the ways we experience spiritual progress is by the application of the word. As we do the application of the word, what do I mean by that? By doing the word. By doing what the word teach. If, if I don't do what the word teach, I can make progress. My progress is in the application of the word. Your transformation is in the application of the word. You, you get to point it to yourself, I'm going to do the word of God. It doesn't matter what has happened. It doesn't matter what the report is right now. I will be committed to the application of God's word. And this is the key to breaking limitation. This is the key to overcoming opposition. And this is the key to unlocking uncommon victory by the application of the word. This situation is subject to change. I want you to understand this. Your health situation is subject to change. Get into the word of God. The word of God is a medicine. There is life in the word. There is peace in the word. And there is strength in the word. Value the word of God. Don't see it as a book of history. Look beyond that. See beyond history. See revelation. See inspiration. See insight. And see uncommon understanding. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to know that Jesus is everything. He heals, He saves, He delivers. And you can come to Him and He will change your life through His Word. And if you're watching today you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can you say this after me? Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. That God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Holy Ghost will help you from this day forward. I want to appreciate every one of you that is watching the broadcast today. And all those partnering with us in ministry. Thank you so much. We appreciate all you do. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. Uh, when you subscribe, you have the opportunity to watch live transforming broadcasts that will empower you to take the lead in the right direction. So subscribe to Fitman Teachings on YouTube. And also, I want to encourage you to consider 
getting our book on Amazon. 40 things you need to know about your future is available on Amazon.com. 40 things you need to know about your future is available on Amazon.com. You can partner with this ministry today as we continue to take the message of our Lord Jesus Christ to many around the world. You can partner with me today by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving and support the ongoing broadcast. Together, we're changing many lives around the world and Jesus is being glorified. God bless you. And I pray that the next broadcast will be a blessing to you. Until I come your way soon, don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon.